Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Welcome back to Aircraft Structures 1. Uh, this is Professor Anup Ghosh from Aerospace Engineering Department IIT Kharagpur. We are in the middle of uh, the seventh week lectures or the module 7. In sequence, it, this is uh, 34th lecture. In the last class, we have learned uh, in polar coordinate system the equilibrium equation. In this lecture, we will be covering the compatibility condition in polar coordinate system and we will discuss uh, a little bit of um, transformation of, of those um, stress function expressions for st in terms of to find out stresses. So, with that note, uh, let us come to the recapitulation slide. Uh, among the re recapitulation slide in the last lecture, we have uh, we have recapitulated we have recapitulated uh, history of aircraft, uh, various types of external loads uh, in detail, flight envelope. To some extent, we have uh, detail uh, we have recapitulated flight envelope. Uh, let us start with that again. Flight envelope. Flight envelope is 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 the envelope within which a particular type of aircraft is supposed to maintain its flight. And flight envelope is important for uh, structures or design because uh, whenever it flies, it experiences inertia loads more than 1 g, more than uh, acceleration involved 1 g. So, since uh, it is very usual uh, by any aircraft to cross 2.5 or something about come to about 3 g forces. So, it is better to maintain a, an envelope or prescribe an envelope uh, within which the design should, uh, should persist or should remain. So, keeping in mind uh, those, those parameters what we have discussed is that uh, flight envelope and the load factor. Load factor is how many times of g forces uh, g means the gravitation force of earth uh, is encountered by any structure uh, that we need to discuss and we have uh, seen in which condition which uh, uh, load factor becomes more. And in this uh, correlation, we have discussed uh, problems uh, related to bending moment and shear force diagram of overall wing and fuselage. We have come across the unit load method. Unit load method is nothing but considering uh, unit g, not only sometimes unit g, sometimes unit force is also considered. So, that uh, any multiplication of force or any multiplication of uh, g factor can easily give us the desired forces or uh, bending moment and shear force encountered by wing and fuselage. So, but it is important to analyze bending moment and shear force of wing and fuselage that is the reason we have learned about those wing, wing and fuselage bending moment and shear force diagram. We have learned uh, three dimensional structures. Three dimensional structures are uh, space structures are important uh, in, in terms of aircraft structures. There are many applications. One of the most prominent ap application is landing gear. And uh, in case of landing gear, uh, we, we use in general the truss concept or axially loaded member concept. So, considering a 
landing gear as three dimensional truss, what are the deflection and what are the loads coming to the components of a truss we have solved. We have solved specific problems, uh, we have seen how it is solved and done. We are also introduced to, to some extent components of trusses like the oleostrut member or torsion links. So, after that we have uh, gone to the displacements or energy methods. Energy methods and displacements where it is it is mentioned energy methods involving complementary energy method uh, involving Castiglianos theorem involving unit load method dummy load method. Uh, so, unit load method, dummy load method, Castiglianos theorem are how those are similar to each other and how efficiently we can use to solve problems, how can we even solve indeterminate problems using those methods that we have seen. Not only that we are introduced to a fundamental process of, of approximate analysis based on energy principles that is the Rayleigh Ridge method. We got introduced how approximation is considered there and how approximate uh, good it is depending on the initial assumptions of the displacement profile that we have seen with, with examples and after that we have come across to the stresses or theory of elasticity approach. Theory of elasticity approach is important in the sense because uh, we sp specifically encounter different types of types of problems uh, which leads to fatal accident. One of the important uh, thing is, is stress concentration around the hole that we are in the process of discussion. And, uh, we can see from, from internet that there was an aircraft designed with uh, almost rectangular windows and uh, that rectangular window led to catastrophic failure of the fuselage. So, we need to need to see why those, those are important to study. So, unless we learn the theory of elasticity approach unless we look in look into the in depth about about the behavior of stress development and strain development and uh, displacement it is difficult to predict problems so that is keeping in mind those things not only those things uh, we need the fundamental uh, development of any numerical method what we are, are popular like the finite element method is based on this elasticity theory of elasticity and uh, energy methods. So, unless we learn all these methods very, very efficient way, we will not be able to learn the further topics that is the reason theory of elasticity is introduced. And in last uh, two weeks, we have, we have considered um, Cartesian coordinate system, we have found out stresses equilibrium equations principal stresses shear stresses stress strain strain displacement relation compatibility strain stress strain relations all those and the last lecture we got introduced to the polar coordinate system for theory of elasticity because we our aim in this week is to to discuss the stress distribution around a hole due to a simple tension in a plate so in in Following that line, what we will do, we will we'll learn in this lecture the compatibility condition in polar coordinate. This is again a kind of simple mathematical derivation, it there we do not have much concept of, of elasticity or structures, it is simple mathematical approach. Let us see how it is done. So, to yield a possible stress distribution, stress function phi must ensure that the condition of compatibility is satisfied. This is the condition of compatibility. In Cartesian 
coordinates this condition is as stated here and sometimes we write this as Grad for phi is equals to 0. So, with this we, we proceed further for present purpose we need this equation to be transferred to polar coordinates the relation between polar and Cartesian coordinate is given by r square equals to x square plus y square it is quite obvious and theta is equals to tan inverse y by x or arc tan y by x. This is quite uh, I think you can easily easily do it it is not big issue. This is r so that is the way it is done for which uh, we have uh, del r del x just simple from, from this what we have is x by r and uh, if we that is equals to cos theta del r del y is equals to sin theta. Now, del theta del x if we use this one we have minus y by r square and that can easily be stated as sin theta by r. And similar way del theta uh, I think a minus is missing here. So, please put that del theta del y is equals to x by r square cos theta by r. Using this and considering phi as a function of r and theta we find that it is del th phi del x is equals to simple series way it is done del phi del r multiplied by del r del x similarly del phi del theta multiplied by del theta del x and then we substitute these values we have del phi del r cos theta minus del phi 1 by r del phi del theta sin theta. So, minus is because of this it is missing here please note that. So, with that we move forward to the next slide. In this slide what we have to get the second derivative with respect to x it is only necessary to repeat I think I need to clean more. To get the second derivative with respect to x it is only necessary to repeat the above operation hence del 2 phi del x square is nothing but multiplication of those two. Here please note in mathematical way how it is written and if we carry out that multiplication we have uh, how many terms 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 terms. And those 5 terms are because of uh, this r r is involved here those and uh, other terms will come and we need to simplify those things I would suggest you carry out that. So, it is finally, we get uh, del 2 phi del r square cos square theta minus 2 del 2 phi del theta del r sin theta cos theta by r del phi del r sin square theta by r plus twice del phi del theta sin theta cos theta by r del 2 phi del theta square sin square theta r square. So, these are the similar term and the similar way if we if we find out del 2 phi del y square we get a similar expression with 5 terms, but please note that this term and this term is simply opposite in sign. This term and this term are also opposite in sign. This two if it is added will van is the theta component. Similarly, this two if we add will vanish the theta component sin square theta plus cos square theta is becoming equals to 1. It is similar to this two term also this two term this two term. So, finally, what we have? We have this 1 by r this and 1 by r square this. This 
those three terms those three terms as it is mentioned we have we have grad square phi but uh, we need the fourth one no is by harmonic equation we need so uh, to in that sense using the identity it is nothing but uh, this is equals to this multiplied by this where this is the derivative multiplication the way it is written and uh, it is not carried out it is better not to carry it out at this position uh, because uh, if we carry it out it becomes lengthy it becomes difficult to handle and we probably do not need that way that is the reason it is not carried out and simple way this term is written here as the biharmonic form in polar coordinate system. And above second order expression the compatibility equation in polar coordinate system becomes this, this is here and the other as parameter form which is written. From various solutions of this partial differential equation, we obtain solutions of two dimensional problems in polar coordinates for various boundary conditions. So, equilibrium equations and compatibility equation in terms of stresses compatibility equations in terms of stresses or stress function is evaluated. So, we need with using this we can attempt to solve problems and in this week we will try to solve problem with respect to a problem which is a whole circular hole in a plate. We will see that problem how the problem uh, simplified way we can discuss in this slide to some extent a plate if we consider this way and if it is under uniform stress is and if we consider one circular hole at the middle what is the distribution of stress at this point? What is the distribution of stress at this point? Whether are those points are having same amount of stress experienced or not? That is a very interesting point, interesting problem to discuss. So, with that note, uh, we will we'll move to the next slide where we will again find out the stress function quantity in a different form in a different way. So, the second the first and second of the above stress expressions as derivatives of stress function may be found out now, because already now we have the coordinates uh, transformation equations from Cartesian to the polar we have. So, we can easily check those if we choose any point in the plate and let the x axis passes through it, we have theta is equals to 0 and sigma x and sigma y are the same. For this particular point as sigma r and sigma theta, it is also similar. Uh, thus, for the second order partial derivative of phi with respect to y and putting theta equals to 0, we can have an expression uh, of sigma r and sigma theta and that is what is uh, done here. Sigma r is equals to sigma x at theta equals to 0. So, that is was del to phi del y square what is we have learned in, in area stress function definition if you remember, but this transformation was not done earlier in the last lecture that is the reason it was not given. We, we simply stated this. So, this equation uh, what we, we can do now we are putting using this value and putting that theta is equals to 0. So, if we put theta equals to 0 what will happen this is 0, this is 0, this is 0, but this is 1, this is 1 right. So, we will have only these two components that is what 1 by r del phi del r and 1 by r square del 2 phi del theta 2 is present here. Similarly, this expre expression continues to represent sigma r 
whatever the orientation of x axis. We find similarly from the second order partial derivative of phi with respect to x and putting theta equals to 0 the expression for sigma theta and in that expression it is similar way theta if we put it it is similar way what we get is that this this expression only because all other terms are involving sin, sin means it is leading to 0. So, we have finally this. So, with this small derivation note uh, we will proceed further and if we uh, follow similar approach we can have the expression for tau r theta. Tau r theta is this as it is written here we can easily find out. So, with as I said with this uh, note of uh, derivation we come to the end of today's lecture. This is the standard um, slide of reference. Conclusion uh, is that we have learned compatibility condition in polar coordinate system and uh, we will learn further polar coordinate to consider problems in the sense of uh, finding out stress distribution around a hole and with that note uh, we come to the end of today's lecture. Next lecture we will start the problem of uh, a circular hole in a plate which is under uniform tension. Thank you.